Welcome to the Healthcare Facilities Network. I'm your host, Peter Martin of Goslin Martin Associates. As always, thank you for clicking on this video. And my hope with the folks who are watching this video, hopefully we have many who are returning viewers of the Healthcare Facilities Network. If you are, thank you. But I also hope we've attracted some newcomers into the Healthcare Facilities Network YouTube channel. Specifically, I would hope we have pulled in maybe some high school students, maybe some college students, maybe some people, regardless of what your age is, who are considering new careers. The mission of the Healthcare Facilities Network, if you aren't familiar, is to fill the pipeline with new employees who work in hospitals and healthcare systems around the country. Facilities management, a lot of people don't know what healthcare facility workers do. But a, a Cliff Notes version of it, because you can find a lot more information on this Healthcare Facilities Network, Cliff Note version of it is essentially they keep hospital buildings up and running. They're the people who work behind the scenes, but their work is out in front, and you see it every time you go into a hospital. If the air is cool and if the air is warm, you thank a healthcare facilities person. They keep the windows intact. They keep the walls intact. They can do the painting. They can do the infrastructure. So. It is an interesting career. They're also at the forefront when you see these emergencies in hospitals, whether they be, unfortunately, fires, earthquakes, healthcare facilities, people are there on the front line. So it's a very interesting and a dynamic career. Now, this particular episode, and I pulled it out for a reason, and kind of angling it towards those high school students and those college students, because my guest is a gentleman by the name of Steve Carberry. Steve, um, rose to a system VP level with Na Yale New Haven Health. And right now he has his own consulting firm, but Steve documents his journey into healthcare facilities management. He started as a maritime student and he rose to a system VP. And I thought these eight minutes that I've pulled out are really, um, are really instructive to how you can come into a career that you really never thought about or never really expected. And not only come into a career that you never thought about or expected, you come into a career that you achieve a lot and you feel like you've changed the lives of a lot of folks. And so I would encourage you, if you, again, are a high school student or a college student, find the, the bigger episode. It's called From the Engine Room to Facilities and Construction System Vice President find a lot more information there but these seven and a half minutes in this particular video they begin at a point in life you are now if you're high school or college that's when Steve talks starts to talk about his journey that led him to a system VP so if you know a high school guidance counselor if you know a college guidance counselor if you know somebody who is thinking what am I going to do with my career show them this video because this video talks about possibility and this video is all about possibility. One other thing, lest you think that your only entry into healthcare facilities management is via a college degree, well, that's not true either. You can go to the trade school, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, get your plumbing license, get your electrical, get your mechanical, and you can find a great career in healthcare facilities working in hospitals. So a degree is not the only route into healthcare facilities management. And as we seek new people to fill roles, because again, if you're looking for a career that's rewarding and that will keep you employed, this is it. And Steve will tell you about it. One other thing, we are in the Christmas season. I have How the Grinch Stole Christmas here. And it reminds me of another book that I love by Dr. Seuss. Love reading these books. When my kids were little, we would read them every night. Don't read them as much anymore. You don't read Dr. Seuss books to your kids who are in college. <laughs> Another book that uh, Dr. Seuss wrote was, Oh, the Places You'll Go. When I graduated from college, my sister gave me that book as a present. Oh, the Places You'll Go. So again, if you are, oh, live TV. If you are in high school or in college, pick up Oh, the Places You'll Go. Because it's in Dr. Seuss version, talks about careers, and it talks about the ups, and it talks about the downs, and even though I got that book some 30 years ago now, 
I still refer to it. So it's, it's very interesting. And I like to think that this conversation I have with Steve is a little bit about, oh, the places you'll go. So give it a watch. Share it with your friends. Share it with your friends who may be looking for a career. And if you have questions at the end, you can find my contact information in the About Us. If you are in college and you have college professors, tell your college professor to show this to the kids in the class. So with that, I will stop talking. I hope if you're new to the Healthcare Facilities Network, you explore some of our videos. And let me kick it over to me and Steve. Thanks for watching. What was it about that role in hospital healthcare that attracted you? Great question. Um, so previously, I had been working in the in the merchant marine business. Uh, I had sailed coming out of college uh, on a container ship going back and forth to the Far East. Okay. Um, that job uh, was a great job, great ship, great ports, uh, but uh, the shipping industry was facing a downturn in uh, the early 80s and uh, came ashore. Had a job as a marine surveyor going around looking at wreck ships for insurance companies basically is uh, similar to an adjuster role. Yeah. But I learned an awful lot about uh, repair work and negotiations in shipyards, uh, dealing with clients and uh, ships crews and shipyard crews, um, high value cargo transfer, you know, very a lot of responsibility for a very young yeah. person, you know, at, at 24, 25, 26 yeah. Um, and traveled around, you know, all the way up to the north slope of Alaska. So it's a great job, but that company uh, faced the downturn in the marine industry and, uh, you know, wound up uh, moving over to uh, Greenwich Hospital, uh, you know, as I said before. So, you know, it, uh, you know, having that having that background, uh, you know, really helped me transition uh, into healthcare. Hey, but how do you see maritime academies playing into help to alleviate this employee shortages that we see and that are going to continue on. How can maritime academies be a solution, continue to be a solution because they've been a solution because they've supplied a lot of people, mm -hmm. but what can they do to help? So we've, we've actually had that uh, conversation with uh, some of the folks at uh, SUNY Maritime College. And I have a uh, you know, friends of mine, a classmate of mine is in the facilities engineering program. Um, they've actually built a new um, mini steam plant, if you will, in their engineering building. And the yeah. whole idea is that it will give uh, students practical shoreside steam knowledge. Um, so they have a small Cleaver Brooks boiler that uh, runs on two oil and uh, that f gets fired up and then we'll run a small steam turbine, but it also runs some heat exchangers and um, you know, uh, pneumatic control, steam reducing stations, um, and gives you know, real hands-on experience of what it's like to bring up pressure. And um, you know, as we say, can he make vacuum? You know, you, you'd have to make vacuum on the condenser on the ship. Uh, in order to get everything to work. And that was always a true test. Um, and so, uh, and the reason it's important um, is the shipping industry is now almost all diesel ships. Um, and so that, you know, steam plant experience is yeah. gonna go by the wayside. Yeah. But yet here we are shoreside and we still rely very heavily on steam. And so uh, a lot of the plant operators that you would get were either uh, you know, merchant marine or Navy, uh, you know, trained, uh, you know, steam plant operators. Um, and if you've ever been on a steam plant on a ship, it is very, very compact. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to spend a lot of time, as we would say, tracing lines and understanding your systems so that you know where everything comes from. If you can learn it in that environment, uh, that's moving at, you know, 17 knots, yeah. up and pitching up and down, uh, and, uh, you know, we, as we say, you've got to know how to fix stuff because there's no tow, tow truck coming to get you if you break down on the side of the canal. You know, you've, you've really got to understand how to repair what you operate. And um, it's, a, it's a very intense uh, environment. So, um, you know, the schools are going to have to continue to, you know, help put out the, the right type of folks. Um, that STEAM experience, uh, they, they do a great job on controls and leadership, 
uh, and uh, maintenance and repair work. Uh, you know, that, that piece of the equation, they do a phenomenal job at. And, and really, um, you know, it's that leadership and, and experience mm. and that engineering background that we look for. Um, you know, we'll supplement the STEAM experience if we need to. But, uh, you know, those, you know those, those young folks come out of those schools and they are ready to go to work. Yeah. Um, they have actual operating experience going on on the training ship. Um, and the five uh, academies, um, you know, currently are all getting converted over to diesel, diesel electric ships. Okay. Um, highly automated, uh, you know, beautiful, you know, physical plant but a different operating system than what we're used to. I mean, they are training merchant marine officers. They're not training hospital engineers. That's right. their mission. Right. Um, but we'll still, we'll still take them all and, um, <laughs> you know, get them some steam experience and they'll pick it up. They're taught it. Um, you know, they understand the theory, um, but they'll, uh, you know, they'll still be my first choice. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine too, you know, as, as I was listening to you, speak and I've talked a little bit to the folks down at Mass Maritime Academy in Bourne and, and they talk about the competition for the students coming out of these academies yes. for everything that you've just mentioned. I'd imagine kind of the demographic and were you like this if you can think about you must have wanted to go to did you go there because you wanted to get that engineering education but also go to see and maybe see the world a little bit before you settled? It's um yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, picked the school because um, it was a unique opportunity. Even back, you know, when I entered there in 1976, um, the uh, they were offering 100% guaranteed employment. Um, yeah. And so that is still pretty much the case today. Yeah. Um, you know, that everybody comes out of there has a job waiting for them at least within four months of graduation. Yeah. Um, very few schools get to say that other than the medical schools. Um, but yeah, the, the, the whole idea of coming out, going to see, um, and the money was great back then. I mean, uh, you know, we made a lot of money. Uh, they still do, do quite well. Um, and even 10 years after graduation, they are still uh, setting record salaries, uh, believe it or not. The state maritime academies are very well thought of. So um, that was the exciting part. But then you come out. And you realize that with that experience and that degree, the world is your oyster. And I, you know, always tell people, you know, you come in school, you're like this, but then you get out and you realize I can do anything I want with that background. And uh, we constantly mentor students and, and graduates that, uh, you know, there are plenty of possibilities and certainly healthcare is one of them. 